Uh, welcome to Philosophy Live. My name is Christine Lambie, and uh, today we have a special guest who will be helping us to understand Ubuntu. Now, just for viewers' clarity, we're talking today about Ubuntu, the Zulu concept, not the Linux operating system. And today we're hoping to include a question or two from viewers, so please put any questions in the comments box as we go along. So I'm really delighted to introduce Quinn Ladla, who is Zulu. He is joining us from South Africa, from KwaZulu-Natal, specifically in uh, Hillcrest, Durban. Good morning, Quinn. Uh, uh, good morning. Great to have you here. So let's start straight away. Uh, what is Ubuntu? Could you give us some clues on that? I think for... I mean, personally, it is, it's always been the philosophy of I am because you are um, our combined humanity, our joint humanity. And thank you. And uh, I am because you are. That's a lovely way of putting it. So, so what has Ubuntu meant in your life directly? We're really interested in your lived experience here. I think with... Ubuntu, there is a, in, in my life, it's been this, uh, as I was saying, commonality, this combined uh, shared experience you have with your community, uh, your family. It starts in a small nucleus family, but it goes to cousins. And then um, I remember growing up in the township where we'd have cousins and neighbors coming over, and everyone was your parent the lady next door, the lady three blocks down, she could tell you to come get some money to go buy her bread. Um, and it's also just how we speak. Everyone is older and there's a lady's Uma and any elder father figure is Uma, which is a father. And so there's this, this um, not seeing another, not two, but it's one. It's everyone is part of your family. And it's a, it's a beautiful way of living. That is it's so interesting to observe it as you grow up. Uh, as I was fortunate to go to uh, Model C schools and some private schools. And in Western education, you, you start to see the individual, individualism that like, starts coming through and interact those interactions and how they change over time has been absolutely interesting. But to answer your question, it is that. Is that it's your bigger family. It's there's no other. Yes, I, I I'm getting sense. Everyone is your your brother, your sister, your cousin, your mother. Um, now I'm hearing a little bit of interference on your line. I'm hoping viewers can hear you properly, but let's just carry on, and I'm going to hope for the best. Yeah. I'm going to share a slide now with a quote from Desmond Tutu. Um, if you don't mind, perhaps I'll read it this time. Uh, Desmond Tutu was a, a wonderful man, and I'm sure South Africa is still feeling his loss. Um, and this is what he said. We say a person is a person through other persons. We don't come fully formed into the world. We learn how to think, how to walk, how to speak, how to behave. Indeed, how to be human beings in order to be human. We are made for togetherness. We are made for family, for fellowship to exist in a tender network of interdependence. Yes, w would you have any comment on that? Yeah, I think it's, especially at the end there, when uh, we're made for family, fellowship, and uh, to exist in a tender network of interdependence. And that's what family strives for. I think the, the best uh, family experiences, all those principles are there. And I think when you, when you can, if you're able to expand that to your society, uh, it changes everything. Yes. <clears throat> uh, so at this point, I'm looking for some questions, but I'm going to uh, just share this comment from Anna Maria. No, not that one. Um, where is it? It takes a village to raise a child. Uh, this, this is a phrase we hear in the West. Is that is that a phrase that actually comes from Africa, would you say? Uh, is that part of your Ubuntu experience? Yeah, so that's that's literally the 
kind of an example I was also giving in terms of just growing up in a township, for example, in, in the north of KZN, where we'd roam around the township, but everyone was your parent. You know, if a lady from three, from the opposite neighborhood asked you to go buy bread or buy her, uh, some milk at the, at the container, you went and did it as if it was your mom. And if you were naughty and they saw you and disciplined you, uh, they could sometimes, you know, give you a spank on the bums and it would still be valid. <laughs> you know, because yeah. everyone was raising you in the township at, at, at that time. Things have changed, obviously, but when you were growing up, it was. You were raised by the community. And it also goes to the small nucleus family you know, in terms of used to the interactions with granny, grandpa, your uncles. Um, all these people have a different role in your upbringing and a different perspective that they provide you as a child. So it was so important having those members of the family um, in your upbringing. Yes. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, in the West, we have this very strong sense of individualism, which, of mm -hmm. course, it has its merits. You know, people strive and they work hard. Um, how how do you see that? You've obviously got a foot in both worlds. What what would you say is the downside of that individualism? Uh, it can be divisive uh, when one thinks for themselves. Um, you forget the the collective, and I think in South Africa, a prime example is the inequality. Uh, if you, I mean, just across the hill as a township. There's a rope splitting these two, and I, th I think we've we stopped seeing the human. We stopped seeing each other as humans, and we just is now seeing each other as individuals. And because we can see each other as individuals, it just becomes systematic in a way. It's oh, you're not working enough, or so we've lost that humanity. And and I think individualism uh, really kind of fosters self gain, and I think. Our country is dealing with that, or at some point has to face face that uh, head to head. Yes, yes. Uh, I've got another comment here, uh, Nicholas. Sorry, I missed a bit. Does Ubuntu mean family? Is the idea that the family can inform national governments? I, I think he's asking firstly, what actually does that word mean? Um, Ubuntu. Yeah, if you were to translate. It's. it's the direct translation is, I think the best closest translation would be humanity, Ubuntu, because uh, Ubuntu is a person is a, or a human, mm -hmm. so it is uh, humanity. And I think to answer his question, to govern, can inform national governance, I think it should be the key pillar of governance is that what is the human experience, the collective human experience, uh, not necessarily the financial gain experience or, or whatever the, it may be at the moment. But yeah, in some of that makes sense. Sure. And uh, let me see. Let, here's another question from Graham. As a child, did Quinn's family speak about Ubuntu or was it just something you discovered as essential to relationships? What, was it something really promulgated or was it just, it's there? That's how you grow up. It's how you grow up. <laughs> so it was not a, not a philosophy, it's just a way of life. And we still have it. There's still many um, aspects of it we still have today and, and just how we deal with each other and how we interact. Um, if I'm at the store with a totally random person next to me, I'll, I'll be like, oh, boot, or baf, or, which is a term of endearment, is like, oh, brother. Um, and there's an openness in communication. If I think if anyone has been to South Africa, you'll, you'll find that we are, it's so easy to, to speak to anyone because there's this underlying Ubuntu. I would definitely agree with that. I, I've been to South Africa many times and my perception is you make friends very, very quickly. You know, you're you're very close instantaneously, really. And it hadn't occurred to me that that was because of this concept just running through the whole society, no matter what race you come from. It, it's it's just present, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, 
Okay. Well, um, I'm going to ask you one final question. If, you know, with your experience of West and uh, Africa, South Africa particularly, what if you were to give us in the sort of more Western countries one piece of advice to kind of realize this beautiful concept, what would you say? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a challenging um, conversation, but my experience of spending some time in Sweden um, and part, different parts of Europe, the you need each other, you need each other. We, there's not two, there's one. We are one. And, and if we can start seeing each other as humans, as, as the, almost the core of our experience or the main point of this experience is, hey, each other, how do we um, accompany each other on this road? The opportunity for love comes and a, and a deeper sense of love comes and I think if we are rooted in what's what's in it for me we'll miss those opportunities the everyday opportunities um, if I can share just like a, a, a simple story of I remember just arriving in, in Sweden and my girlfriend had told me uh, people don't talk on the bus or the train <laughs> you know and being a South African you want to it's, it's almost rude if you don't greet the person next to you. You make eye contact and you don't greet them. It's, just, it's almost rude. And so I come with that naiveness. And here I'm Scandinavian. I'm greeting everyone. And everyone's like, oh, who's this guy? Do I know this person? What was amazing was after a month, I also started not greeting. But what I started also did know, just was what I was doing at the example of the till. And the lady would always be confused, but if I persisted, it's almost like they came alive. There was this, and there's no interaction all of a sudden. And of, of course, it may be meaningless, but it's that little coming alive, that little joy in those little moments. I feel like it's so worth it, but it's so easily, can be easily so squashed. And I would say there's so much to life, and it starts with us as humans. If that makes sense. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Quinn. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for your insight you. and your, you know, your lived experience. It's wonderful. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So um, I hope you found that interesting. I certainly did. Um, final thought on Ubuntu for today. I'll, I'll leave it with what Quinn has said. Uh, we need each other. I am because you are. So if you've enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. And uh, next week, join us again for Philosophy Live, 8.30 a.m. UK, where you will meet my colleague, Graham Blackbourne. Thank you so much. Have a great day.